Well, allow me to welcome you to Salem First Presbyterian Church, one of the oldest congregations in the Salem area. Uh, on May 15th, 2019, we will celebrate our 150th anniversary as a life and, and as life and mission in this community, in this city, a community of faith that has a major impact on the city through and state and nation through its lifetime. Um, just in case you didn't know, four governors of the state of Oregon were members in this congregation, as was President Herbert Hoover raised and nurtured in this church. So, uh, so there. Um, yeah, Portland, yeah, take that, huh? Come on. 2009, Salem First Presbyterian Church began a, began a major mission remake, a sacred journey from the traditional first church attractional model, providing religious goods and services for attendees, to a more dynamic listening learning model of missional engagement in our city, in our region, and in our, our country. The, national, the, the foundational theological notion driving this missional makeover was the truth that our calling is not so much to bring Christ to the world, but rather to recognize the places where Christ is already present in the world, and then to find ways for us to come alongside him as agents of compassion and justice and reconciliation. This notion of co-creating with Christ God's reign of right relationships in our city has in fact empowered us to risk becoming more interactive, dynamic, relational, courageous, and reflective as a community of faith, willing to allow our missional context to form and shape the way we embody the gospel with one another and the way we live it out in our community. The two reference points for this journey beyond the traditional maps of church life have been our mission and vision statements. And I think where they're gonna be projected on the screen I'm always hesitant because Ashley's at the monitor and that's always a frightening thing, um, yes. Uh, but anyway, um, our mission statement is a community of ordinary people experiencing and embodying God's extraordinary love. Our vision statement, we are a Christ-centered listening, learning community, embracing the needs of our city through the grace of Jesus Christ, seeking ways to see, know, care for, and empower our neighbors as we welcome them home. As we've managed and navigated this challenging season of our life, those have been the two reference points that we've called upon many times to help us make decisions to discern where we thought God was calling us. While our journey continues to stretch and challenge us, it also empowers us to dream God's dream for our future. This dreaming about the future has taken the form of embracing and calling upon the New Matrix organization to help us with a visioning process through which we hope to discern the next chapter of our saga as the people of God at the corner of Winter and Chemeketa Streets. Over the past nine years, while we have experienced a number of things, here's some highlights that we wanted to share with you. We've reorganized the session uh, mission design to, to a decentralized um, uh, form of government to empower lay leadership and servanthood at the most, the most direct levels of, of mission and engagement. We've adopted a Sunday AM dual worship style that uh, for the first time in 140 years of this congregation's life, we practice on a weekly basis two styles of worship, classic service at 9.30 here in the sanctuary. At 11 o'clock, we have a contemporary service downstairs in our worship center. We also have added a couple of other interesting worship experiences. On Reformation Sunday, each year, we have a big celebration here called the Kirken of the Tartans where we celebrate our Reformed tradition and everything Scots. And uh, that's complete with haggis, which is not one of the best things the Scots have come up with, and then shortbread, which is one of the better things the Scots have come up with. We also, on the Sunday before um, Ash Wednesday, we have a special service we call the Mardi Gras service, where we celebrate the gospel through jazz, beads, and beignets. And um, if you haven't had a beignet, uh, you're going to be surprised when you get to heaven because that's what we're all going to be eating. We've also reoriented our congregational energy focus and our staff on the missional context just outside our doors. We've reorganized our board of deacons to become the pastoral and congregational care arm of our church. We've enhanced the media, technology, and user friendliness of our facility to better serve our mission and the Salem community. We have opened our facility to Little Friends Montessori Preschool, which is just down that hallway, 
Uh, we've also opened it up to the downstairs to Brothers of Valor, which is a ministry uh, through media and, and technology for at-risk students on our streets in the city of Salem. We are partnering with Brothers of Valor as they have created a recording studio and soon we hope to have uh, use our lower worship area for a venue for students to try their first concert or their first, uh, uh, first public uh, display of their skills and abilities. We also are having a nesting of a new church called the New Beginnings Church, which is a Marcellese congregation that's, that is in our facility. We continue to be connected to Salem Interfaith Hospitality Network, now called Family Promise, and we host um, families here on a, about six times a year basis. We, uh, these, are also, these are families who are homeless and looking for um, and in, a, in a program that will help them find their way back to uh, uh, a sustainable life. We participate in the Community Action Center's warming shelter. In fact, uh, it was uh, a poignant Christmas Eve for us because as we celebrated worship here, as Presbyterians always do on Christmas Eve, the very moment that Jesus was born um, 2,000 years ago, that below us were 85 homeless people sleeping in our, in our, in our, in our basement. And um, it, it, was, uh, it was one of those moments where it all made sense. Beyond that, we have also been involved in supporting of Young Life Leadership Development, Men's Bible Study Fellowship, and numerous other civic and charitable organizations and agencies in and through our facility. We've strengthened our commitment to Presbyterian disaster assistance over the past several years, uh, sending work crews literally all over the place. In 2015, the session produced a statement of our common humanity in response to the fear-driven xenophobic language of, the, of that presidential campaign. And um, you can find that statement on our website and also in the hallway by the office uh, as you're exiting out to the word the parking lot. Um, we, on the, immediately on the heels of that, our session made the decision to adopt and to support uh, the Mohando family, which is a refugee family from Somalia, a, a um, Muslim family that had spent 10 years in a refugee resettlement location uh, prior to arriving in the States. And in 2017, we became a full inclusion, third way congregation as we opened our doors, our ministry, and our life to all people, all types, all kinds. And when we say every Sunday that we have communion, this is open for all of God's people, we mean all of God's people. Now, an interesting byproduct of this journey has been some significant demographic changes in our church. In 2009, the average age of Salem First Presbyterian Church was 65 primarily made up of white bread Presbyterians with long membership tenures. Sadly, over the nine years I have been here, with nothing me doing about it whatsoever, 140 of these saints have graduated to the church triumphant. Today, our classic worship service average age is now 68. But the average of our contemporary coffee house bistro worship service, as we call it, is actually 50, is 39, which brings our actual general average of membership now to 59 rather than 65. We are smaller. We struggle with financial issues. We continue to deal with all the other things that other congregations have dealt with. But in the process of all of that, we seem to have found a way to open our doors and our lives and our church to another generation, a younger generation, that um, uh, doesn't always understand Presbyterianism, um, and, and but who among us does? And uh, but it, but nonetheless, uh, we've been able to open our lives and our doors to a new generation of people. Uh, our contemporary service, at least a third to a half of them, are probably uh, under 25 in, in worship and attendance. Well, throughout this journey, we have attempted to treat one another with respect, grace, and compassion, even as we've wrestled with our theological, ecclesiological, political, economic, and cultural differences. We've done this in large measure by depending upon the presence and power of the Holy Spirit, but we've also done it in large measure because we've simply chosen to take our missions seriously and not take ourselves seriously. And to demonstrate that, I just want you to check out this video. Okay. 